Our first session, pretty much dead on schedule, is the future of payments in gaming. And this is with Faisal al Bitar from Tamatem. Is Faisal with us? Fantastic. Give it up for Faisal. All right. Thank you for that. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Faisal al Bitar, and I'm the product principal at Tamatem Games. And today I'll be talking about the future of payments in the mobile gaming space also touching upon how alternative payments is really transforming the MENA region. And then finally, how can game developers and publishers really leverage uh, this opportunity? So did you know that more than 70% of the MENA region today is underbanked or unbanked? Meaning a large portion of the population today does not have access to basic financial products. And the reason is they're either financially excluded, lack of financial literacy, and lack of trust to basic financial institutions. Countries like Egypt, with a 100 million population, only 30% are banked. Countries like Iraq have less than 3% credit card penetration. So the reality is there's a 70% loss opportunity where users in MENA do not have access and the ability to conduct pro uh, transactions in the digital economy. Traditional distribution channels like Apple and Google offer very limited payment options, only credit cards and debit cards. Yet, when we look at MENA as a whole, MENA is one of the fastest growing gaming market, valued around $5 billion Today, there are more than 400 million Arabic speakers, 70% smartphone, smartphone penetration, and in Saudi Arabia alone, there are around 61% of the population are actually gamers. That means that there are more than 21 million mobile gamers. And in Saudi, Arab Saudi Arabia alone, $270 is the average revenue per paying user. That is eight times the average paying, paying user in China. Yet, with all that, there's still an untapped opportunity, and it's massive. And the reality is, how can we unlock this region? We're starting to see that this is starting to shape up. And one part of it was really post-COVID. Post-COVID, digital payment method adoption in the region increased from 9 to 70%. And this was led to several reasons. One was changing consumer preference. Consumers now are demanding for alternative methods that are much cheaper, more accessible, and much easier to use. And that demand has been met by a huge supply of fintechs, financial technology companies that are offering financial products fully digital, more conveniently, and much cheaper. Today, you can use a payment method right from your smartphone. You don't need to go to a bank account, you don't need to go through a process of signing a million papers, and it's for free. And then finally, governments have realized the importance of these initiatives and have been pushing for financial inclusion. When we look at me the FinTech in MENA, it's also one of the fastest growing markets globally. Today, there are more than 500 FinTech startups in MENA, and the majority are in the payment space. There are a lot of companies today in MENA offering alternative payment methods like credit cards, yet with zero interest fees. Or a payment method that you can open directly from your phone and it's embedded in your checkout experience. And a, and a catalyst that has been increasing this adoption has been mobile wallets. And the reality is today in MENA, smartphone penetration outpaces bank accounts. Companies like STC Pay, which is a normal wallet based out of Saudi Arabia, has 6 million users. Other companies like Fauri offers a cash outlet opportunity for people to pay with cash and purchase digitally. They have a bigger outlet network than branch networks in Egypt. And others like Vodafone Cash. Today, wallets is becoming the preferred payment method for a lot of these users. 
Going back to Egypt, today Egypt has more than 20 million mobile wallets. And that will increase to around 58 million. That is more than 60% of the population of Egypt. And that's why the solution today to really penetrate the region is of two of things. It's access to distribution networks and alternative payment methods. Because the reality is these alternative payment methods are becoming the primary accounts for these consumers. And as a game developer and as a game publisher, depending only on card payments will no longer cut it. And that's why I'd like to share with you an opportunity of how you can leverage the region through Tomatum Plus. So Tomatum Plus is a one-stop shop platform that offers you distribution, monetization, and support. You can start enlisting your game items on our marketplace. And we'll support you in acquiring users, but also expanding your reach in the region. We'll offer your users the ability to conduct transactions using local preferred payment methods. Payment methods that they use on their daily day. And what's, 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 what's so attractive of this is that the payment methods that we're offering are also suitable for microtransactions. Whereas a merchant, you're no longer paying a 35% transaction fee that you pay for Apple, PayPal and other solutions. And then finally, we offer you full support on the platform. You don't have to worry about customer disputes, payments. All you need to worry about is creating games. And that's what you're good at. We understand how important monetization is. And we've been working on resolving these challenges. The reality is offering a large payment network is a lot of hassle. It requires, it's a time consuming process. It requires multiple APIs and different integrations. And there's a huge headache in terms of meeting compliant requirements and having legal presence in every entity. And that's why we're here to solve that for you. By just listing on our platform, you get access to more than 25 payment methods across eight countries with a diverse network of mobile wallets, direct carrier billing, and cash outlets. And it's only one single technical and commercial connection. The solution is pretty simple. We offer you a marketplace where you can start enlisting your in-game items. You can customize your in-game items and packages with no limitations, targeting your whale customers and other users. You can offer unique promotions and bundles in order to incentivize in acquiring new users, but also increasing retention. And then finally, with a simple SDK integration, any user that conducts a payment on our platform is automatically redeemed into the account. Higher margins plus greater access equals more revenue. So what are the benefits for a game developer partnering up with Tomatum Plus. First is reach. We help you in acquiring new users in the MENA region, but more importantly, as well as expanding to a segment that is yet to be untapped. Two, throughout the platform, you can create different packages that could increase loyalty and convergence of your users, but also increasing the average transactions. And with every transaction you make, you save on the margins our margins are much more competitive than traditional distribution platforms. And then finally, it's quite simple. One integration gives you access to a large network of payments as well a full experience for your users to offer them the ability to transact and automatically top up their game accounts. And our business model is very simple. Zero integration fees, zero upfront costs, and less than 15% in terms of every transaction you make. As Tamatim, we know this market very well. We've been in the market for over nine plus years. We are a game developer and publisher. We've developed and published over 50 plus games, more than 150 million downloads, and our games have reached 50, uh, more than 50 uh, number one charts. We know this market very well, and we're here to support you. We're also backed by regional and global investors like Crafton, MSA, 
and other local investors who know the region very well. So unlock the world's fastest growing mobile market with just one click. You can scan our QR code, join our network, and we're happy to work with you. Thank you. That's great. Do we have any questions in the room? I have, I have a question. Why is it that you think that the banks have been so slow? Why is it, why is it that they've left this, this, this yawning gap that so many companies have been, are able to fill with digital payments? Yeah, so there's a number of reasons. One of the reasons is uh, banks do not know how to serve a segment of users that have, do not have um, or have not yet had any type of data previously in terms of taking any loans or products. The, the second aspect is that serving those type of customers is quite expensive. Uh, because banks and previously have relied on having actual infrastructure in terms of serving them. And the reality is that a lot of these customers have now been, been able to move digitally with just their smartphones. Um, so banks have not realized that, but I think the sleeping giant is now has awakened, and they're definitely moving in that space. Uh, but it takes a lot more than just figuring out, but designing the whole experience and making it very simple and easy to use. Any more for any more? Let me get a mic to you. Firstly, thank you. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, my name is Tomer. I'm a game economist uh, manager at uh, Playtica. Uh, and actually, it was very interesting. Um, I just wanted to know what is the market of uh, MENA, MENA users? Like, what kind of games do they play? A uh, specific category or something if... Uh, you have a view about it or uh, any yeah. insight? Sure. Uh, so we see there are a couple of genres that are quite attractive in the market. Uh, card games is uh, something that we've seen uh, quite a tremendous growth, uh, strategy, role playing. Uh, a lot of MENA users prefer to play social games. So any type of game that has a social interaction, we generally see that there's a much higher um, adoption rate there. Okay, and second uh, question, we use um, in our games a lot of segmentation for uh, pricing. So do you guys also support it? Definitely. So throughout the platform, you can build different packages for different users. And I think the beauty there is that there is no longer a limitation. So if you want to offer packages that are above $100, you can also use that through the platform. Amazing. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. One more back here. Hi, I'm, Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I was wondering, is it allowed to have, for example, skill games for cash? Is the, well, let's say the legal framework it does, would allow that, for example, uh, think about games like uh, Bingo Cash, where you can play against somebody else, but for actual money, so topping up with money. First of all, is this legal? And also, would you be able to support something like that? Uh, so it really depends uh, on the jurisdictions. There are certain jurisdictions where would restrict that directly. Uh, there are other areas where I would say it's still in a gray area, uh, but happy to discuss this offline and look at how we can support you there. Fantastic. Well, good. Give it up for Faisal. That was great. Thank you for that.